Greetings Stationers, John Doe here. Uh, welcome back to my uh, testing labs here on Mars. Uh, we're trying out, or I should say I'm developing a new MIPS program for the brand new released uh, Linear Articulated Rail Entity. Uh, we'll, we'll just call it a rail arm. And, um, we'll just kind of start with some of the requirements uh, for this thing work uh, for when you're laying it out uh, and then we'll kind of get into what uh, my MIPS routine is doing for you and then you know some variations on what you can do with it. So uh, to start off with obviously you need uh, the rail system um, and something that kind of caught me up the first thing when I was laying it out is that uh, after you place your uh, original station um, you have to build the arms uh, or the rail system going to the right. Uh, I went to the left originally and nothing worked. So um, if you did something along the swords or, or if you were planning to go to the left, um, stop now and, and rethink that process. So go to the right. Um, now there's little stations that get put up here. Um, you don't have any control over naming those. Um, now I haven't tried building it from say, you know, the end back to the start. Um, I'm assuming it works kind of like the elevator where you have to start at the base and work in one direction for it to properly synchronize with itself, right? So uh, I'll, I'll make that recommendation now is start at your base station and then progress to the right and then you can go in any direction. After that, just, just make sure it's sequential in the process. Okay, so a couple of other things that I've learned uh, in my experiments is that the arm doesn't just pick up anything on the ground uh, and when it drops something or, you know, if it has something in its hand and you want it to drop it, it doesn't just drop it on the ground. It wants to drop it into a bin. Uh, likewise, when it wants to pick up, it wants to pick it from a bin or I, I, I should more technically accurate here and say an item with a slot right so your hydroponics tray has a slot and it says here uh, right there in you know the little expanded description this is a plant slot okay um these bins uh they added a new uh, i think it's an export bin um yeah they they, they have uh an import bin and an export bin uh, where they used to just have an import bin um, they need to be the powered ones uh, they do not work like like these over here are, are just unpowered ones and uh, they're called I think shoots input shoots yeah a shoot inlet and a shoot outlet uh, these do not work with the arm so uh, I've got them set up here for some manual manipulation uh, for my testing, but um, or to interact with your arm, obviously you got to have these these powered inlet and outlet shoots. Okay, let's get the overhead of time. Um, my programming does not do any management for the environment. Right? It's it's not going to manage your room temperature. It's not going to manage uh, your air pressure, the mixture of gases. Uh, it's not going to control your water, your water flow. Uh, it's not even going to see if it has anything there. Uh, it's just going to assume that all this is managed. Um, let's talk about uh, the bins and their functions. So I currently have a requirement in my code for three bins. Uh, two are import bins for picking up items, right? One is going to be for seeds, uh, which is what I've set this one up closest to the, uh, the tray with. The one in the middle I have set up for picking up fertilizer. And then this last one is uh, an, an export shoot, shoot import, okay, um, which I will be dropping everything off. So the, the planned future state is to have a sorter system that will pick up everything and then route it to wherever it is you need to go, right? Seeds will go into one stack. Uh, 
harvested crops need to go somewhere else. Um, fertilizer will get dropped in here, and, and I'll go over this here in, in a minute, but uh, basically everything that doesn't get planted into these hydroponic trays is going to be sent back here, and then you will have to manage where it gets distributed to. The other thing that you will need to manage uh, in, in a different app, right, is uh, making sure that when this shoot or this import bin gets an object, it has to you know, flip it and accept it and send it down the line. Just because you drop something in there, it, it, it doesn't automatically, you know, cycle the event to get it into the shoot system. Uh, something has to activate that either you by hand or some other type of automation if uh, uh, this this MIPS program is expecting this bin to be empty and to be able to accept whatever it brings um, now uh, if you want to add that feature to this you can but will it will at, be at the cost of some functionality of the current MIPS program and I'll go into a little bit um, later on on where we can remove some functionality and it not really impact you uh, based upon certain conditions, right? So we'll, we'll we'll get into some of that later. Okay, so we now uh, have a rail system set up that I that I made before I started this video, uh, and, and my intent for this program is to be expandable without really requiring you to go back in and, and do any code, right? So I, I can handle up to 30 junctions. Um, and that's, uh, a junction is a rail piece. So you can see it while I'm talking about it. The linear rail section. So if I wanted to add another piece, so that's just a plain rail. And that would be a rail station, whether it's a straight one or a corner one. Um, a station would be where the arm will stop to process something. If it's just a rail, it's it's only used for traveling. It's it's not going to stop there. So, for example, if I advance to the next line, it's it's going to skip through that whole middle section and go to the next station. Right. So when these gets placed, these are automatically named uh, by the software right so the first one is junction one there's junction two junction three four and so on and so forth so let's see the last one is currently junction five so if i were to add another station here that would automa automatically be named station six and so on and so forth to however many you actually get built so to start off i have the required three sh shoot systems that my software is going to require um, and I've got two stations above these two hydroponic bays um, I'm gonna add some more here later in just a bit after I do a little demonstrating uh, of the process but, um, the intent here is we'll add to this rail system later and you'll see how we really don't have to change the programming at all to accommodate okay so right now I have all the shoots empty, and that's on purpose, just to get started. Um, let's let's take a first look at the Cody here. All right. So there are there is some homework that you're going to have to do to set up the system. Uh, the first thing on here is that we need to know what you are naming this arm system. Um, I've, I've called it arm one in my program. So if we go back out here, we grab my labeler. That's this base station here. You can see I've named it arm one. So if you change it to something different, uh, say you wanted a series of these arms um, for different crops you wanted to manage, uh, you, you, could, you could easily just create a, a, a huge bank of these uh, arms uh, rail systems and manage them individually. I'm, I'm using batch naming, so we're looking for a name and we're not putting them under screws. So once we do all this work, it's just drop the chip in, start the program, and 
as long as all your naming is done correctly, it's just going to start working. So let's go back to her. All right. So the next, the lines three, four, and five here, we're looking for a seeds pickup station, which will be your junction number, uh, the fertilizer pickup station, and the drop off uh, station. So if we sneak back out of here. So here is my seed station. And if I look up here, that's junction three. My fertilizer is station four. And my drop off is station five. And it does not matter to me where these are located. You, you just simply need to know what the number is. Come back into the program. So there's seeds are on on station three, fertilizer pickup is on four, and our drop off is on five. So if yours are different, just simply change these to wherever they're at. They could be at the beginning, they could be at the end. Uh, matter of fact, you can even have uh, one of the bins at station zero, and station zero is directly underneath the arm station. So right now I've got a pipe there, so uh, I, I can't put a chute there, but if, if you if you were to put yours somewhere else, you can put something under station zero. The other naming that you're going to have to do is a little further down. And that's uh, all these uh, push and hash commands. So uh, I'm using currently PB for a planer box and uh, I'm creating a stack uh, so that I can manage these w with calls uh, and, and save a ton of, uh, of space of this code. So um, if you're using up to, uh, we, we can control up to 30 uh, different uh, stations, right? Not necessarily planter boxes, but stations on the rail. Uh, if you're not using that many, you can remove some of these to give you some extra space. As you can uh, see here, I'm using all but one line of the code to get all this done. So, um, you know, if you wanted to modify this and add some functionality, uh, and you're only using, say, 10 of these stations, then then you can clean out uh, these lines of code and get yourself some, some extra space in your computer, if that's what you're doing. Um, now, you do not have to remove these if you're not using all these stations. Um, the the routine will launch initially, figure out how many stations there actually are, and if you have uh, a definition in here for a station above the number of stations available, it will just ignore them. So you do not have to remove these if you do. The only thing you should really have to do is rename the, the little prefix here, um, a, a, a Whatever you want it to be, and it doesn't have to be two letters. Um, the G. Whatever you want it to be, um, it just has to be unique. So this way, if you install multiple rail lines, you, you just have to have a different prefix because uh, the, the MIPS is going to call it by name. Just to find it and pull the data, right? So let's, let's pull up my handy here. Uh, my labeler you can see i've named this pb1 and it needs to be under station or junction one pb2 needs to be under junction two uh, now i have shoots under here right so i have to keep these stations um, in line in my stack right i, I can't remove it from the stack because that's a placeholder that i'm using to align the hydroponics bay with the station so if I were to add, in fact, let, let's just do it here because I wanted to demonstrate. Let's say we added uh, a new hydroponics bay to an existing line. Okay. So make sure you use your middle scroll wheel and get the hydroponics device and not the tray. The tray does not have a data port. The hydro, uh, using your middle scroll mouse button, you can get the hydroponics device and you can see the little data port connection. We'll just connect here to, to a place that I already had set up to configure. 
uh, make sure that we have cable running to connect it to our, our MIPS network. Um, it does not need power, so if you have power there, it's not going to short anything out. We're okay. And now we just need to make sure we have it named correctly. So, um, this was Junction 5. So, the next one's going to be Junction 6. So, I would need to name this PP6 so that I stay aligned in my stack with the junction numbers that are on the rail. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If we were to come over here, you'll see I've already got this name PB7 to align with station seven, which will be the next to uh, the next station after I add the one. Uh, and, and we'll do that here in a bit. Uh, just So we've got that lined up. Uh, nothing in my bins. I uh, already have water flowing through my pipes at the correct temperature. Uh, if you're looking at my external display, I've got 101 uh, kPa pressure at 26 degrees. So I'm already at an environment that is friendly to plant. And hopefully yours is also the same. So let's see if there's anything else we need to go over in here. Uh, so I'm already named, at least for my demonstration purposes. And I think that's all the editing that you need to do for your side, unless you want to do some further customization. So I, I think we can stop looking at the coding now, and, and let's get into playtime, right? So after you insert your chip and, and turn it on, the first thing it's going to do is the arm will you know go back to home and then it's going to run the entire length of the rail to determine how many stations you've got installed I, I, it, it doesn't tell me so i just use a little routine to do that and then once it's determined how many it's it's found then it starts a little loop process right it starts at station one two three four five two however many you've got in now, if that station turns out to be one of the bins or station zero, then it just skips it and goes to the next one, right? So it'll first process station one, station two, skip, skip, skip. Once we add these other stations, it'll then go to this station and this station. Once it hits the end, then it goes back to the start and loops all the way. So let's, let's demonstrate some of that. So we'll turn it on and you see it's going home. Well, it's supposed to go home. Okay, I gotta pull the chip out since I powered it down. Sorry, let me re-clear. Insert the chip, now it goes home, and now it starts the search. If you just power it down like I just did there, it just continues where it left off last time. So I'll make sure I say that. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening right now. So right now it's well, it may not be on station one. But the first thing it did is it went to station one and it looked to see if it had a plant. Uh, it realized that there wasn't. And so therefore it, it wants to go pick up a seed to put it in there. So here's my seed pickup. Uh, and since I don't have any in there, it's tr <laughs> it just, it basically fails. And when there's a failure, it simply goes on to the next task. So realistically, what it's doing is it's going to the next tray and, and it figures out, oh, I need a seat here. Well, so let's go get a seat for that one. Well, it's it's still still failing because there's no seat. Uh, and then on to, well, there's none over there, so I, I guess I don't have to bring that up. Yet. So let's throw a seat in there and, and watch what happens. Uh, let's do taters. We like tighters. Split one, so we only put one in there. All right, so now it'll pick up the seed, and it'll go to whatever one it was examining. Okay, so this one, we're in station one, and it puts it in there, and now it realizes, oh, I need fertilizer. So now it's going to the fertilizer bin. Doesn't find any. Okay, so now it goes to the next one. Now I need seeds. Oops, I don't find any. Now we're back to station one. It wants fertilizer. So 
if you see the arm just going up and down and then not moving on beyond that, that's an indicator to you that you're out of stock on something, right? If it's reaching in here, well, obviously it's closed and you can visually see that. But if you're on the other side of the base and you see your arm just kind of acting this way, then you, you need to pay attention to your, your stock supplies and, and refill any missing items. This isn't going to break anything. It'll just stay in this loop until either the plant grows to maturity and it's ready to be harvested, or you finally get some supplies. Now let's drop a full set of stack of uh, seeds in here. This might be it. And then you'll see that it will pick up an entire stack and then how it manages, right? So it's got three in there now. It's it's got extra because it's only going to plant one seed and anything left over it's going to drop here in the bin so obviously you're going to need to have something to manage just like i mentioned earlier process that to make sure that this remains open for any new items that get dropped so i'm just going to leave this in here for now um, again that's something that your automation will keep this bin full of whatever seeds that you uh, I'm not currently filtering out for any particular seed types whatever seed shows up in there we're gonna plant it in whatever uh, bin is available uh, for an open seed okay so let's do the same thing with the fertilizer now a little stack over here that all right so that was only one so it's going to drop one and it happened to be at station two at the time so station one still needs fertilizer so it's trying to fulfill that need right so as before just like the seeds if we put in a stack it's going to grab whatever's in that bin which is going to be a stack plant your fertilizer and then anything left over is going to be brought back and dropped off so now that everything is full you can see our arm shuts down and is in a wait state waiting for uh, seeding so uh, it, the plants will mature first and then they go into seeding so we were going to wait until seeding before we do anything with these arms and we'll come back to that uh, in a bit so for now while we're waiting for these to grow i'm going to add uh, these two harvesters of hydroponics bags to the rail system by adding uh, two more stations to the current system item and we're there okay so station rail piece and then a station okay and this should be station five if i'm not mistaken six sorry six because this was five over here yep okay all right so you'll notice that my arm is not going to these two stations that's because when we first ran it, those were not there, so those are not in memory, and the program doesn't know that it's there. So we can't just turn it on and off again, because again, if you just power it down, the program simply continues where it left off when it's powered up again. You have to actually pull the chip, drop it back in, and then it's going to rescan how many stations there are. Right? So one. Two, three, left over. Five. See, I think I remember some other music going. going zzz, there we go. Six, and there's seven. All right. So now it's determined that this bay, this tray is open, so it's going to come down here and grab a seat. Trudge, trudge, trudge. And seed, and then it should come back and grab a piece of fertilizer if it can find it. Now, first, it's got to drop off the 
Drop that off. This plant is nope, it's not ready for seeding, but it will be shortly. So um, rather than pause the video, we'll we'll give this a few minutes. Let's see how quickly that comes to seeding. If it takes too long, I'll just stop the video and and bring you back in. Um, some other tips and tricks while we're here doing a little bit of waiting. Uh, now, I, I do have my greenhouse here with, with nothing but windows. But one thing that I have found is that just to spot, just because you have windows and sunlight and daylight coming through, uh, the shadows can really have an effect on your plants. So I do recommend that even though you have all this sunlight, that you actually turn on a grow light during your daylight hours. Um, that way, if there are shadows uh, cast over your plants, you are still getting the necessary sunlight uh, needed by your plants to grow. Um, it, it's saying right now it's thriving, which is good. Um, but I'm really close to the wall here and the sun is actually traveling uh, in the direction that I'm facing now towards my entry. So it's not getting as much sunlight as, say, if I were back here. So uh, it's a good idea to, to put in a, uh, uh, a grow light. And it just has to be within a radius. It doesn't have to be above it. It doesn't have to be inside. It's just got to be within a certain radius of the plant box. And, and I, I couldn't tell you what that is. But, um, you know, a little trial and error there will we'll, we'll tell you that. And again, this is something you need to manage with a different program. Uh, this particular program I'm displaying here now does not do that. Since I didn't have it on all day, let's just leave that on and see if we can't get this seeding done a little quicker. I had another tip I want to share, but that eludes me. And, um, all right, let me do a quick fast forward and maybe I'll remember the tip I was going to share in that process. All right, so we are now at seating. So I restarted the video and we can now watch what's going to happen here with harvest. So first thing it does is it grabs the seeds and it will drop them off in our drop off bin. We will manually process this for now. You know what to do by now. All right, and now potatoes only give you one seed, so that's all we're getting. Uh, now it's going to go grab the the harvest, the crops in this case. There's one potato, and I believe uh, we only get two total. And here we go. It's going to go back for the next one. It's going to be this. So drop off. goes now it's going to recognize hey i have an empty planter it's going to go grab a seed and plant that seed oh uh, let's see fertilizer went away so now it's going to go for a piece of fertilizer now if you don't have fertilizer that's not a problem. It, the plant will still grow. You just get some bonuses. And I thought you were supposed to get extra seeds if you use fertilizer. So uh, that may be a bug that the devs need to address. Uh, or maybe it just grows faster and you don't get extra seeds. But the, I, I thought I read somewhere you were supposed to get extra seeds. Uh, that's a story for uh, a, another video. So now we're back to waiting for... Uh, the next stage of crop. One of these crops is going to to mature and get to seeding and, and then we'll see this repeat for each arc over time. So um, at first run, you know, when you have a bunch of empty planters, it may take a while for them all to get populated. Uh, but then they'll grow kind of in staggered formation and, you know, it will eventually get them all processed. So um, again, we can handle up to 30 stations um, with the 
pre-designated coating. So I, I think that'll cover pretty much any need that you have there. That's kind of overkill in my book, so uh, have fun with that. Uh, for seeds, you can also, you know, just use, uh, 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 I, I think you can drop anything off. It doesn't have to be a seed. It could be one of the harvested item. Um, and the potatoes don't seem to spoil in their raw state, so you could actually drop these in there. If they do spoil, it's, it appears to be very slowly over time. So um, for potatoes, you're getting one seed per crop, so you should be able to indefinitely keep a potato going uh, as long as you're you know, able to keep your environment and temperatures in the desired range for the plant, and um, it'll just kind of go on forever. Uh, and you get taters and other harvesting crops that you're after. Now, um, another option, the, the tip I was going to mention uh, before that I'm, um, sometimes you may want your plants to keep growing and then get the gas benefit from the plant, right? You say you might want to keep a plant going for the oxygen or the carbon dioxide or the cooling effect, you know, wh whatever benefit that particular plant may have. And you don't want to make that last harvest, which would, uh, in fact, empty out the tray, right? Because you basically the final harvest pulls that plant out of uh, the tray. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll say kill it, right? So if that's the case, um, you can either do some uh, editing to the codes to do like we did for the bins, right? And and add a line to say if it's, if it's junction number or station number X, uh, to just skip that station. Uh, the easiest thing to do really is just to rename it so that my routine can't find it. Let's go here, right? So right now the are named uh, PB7. If I didn't want it to harvest the station ever again, I could just change it to some other name that's not in my stack. Uh, we'll, we'll call this one, you know, no touchy. A and now, Unexpected. Shouldn't have done anything. <gasps> Gas. Okay, so don't do that apparently. <laughs> okay, so uh, revise the uh, tip there. Do not um, name it. Just don't put it underneath the arm. So that was PB7. Bacon. So that may just be a, a coding issue with MIPS uh, holding on to that memory address. Uh, I, I can't say for sure. But uh, putting it back to the correct name here, obviously it's going to replant the seed and it's going to uh, redo the fertilizer if it can find any uh, and, and get it back in the, in the, uh, the loop. Okay, uh, that was interesting. I wasn't expecting that. And obviously, I didn't test it before I went to video. Let's see. Anything else we need to cover? I think that's it. If I think of anything else, I'll, I'll come back and update the video. Um, but for now, I think this will get you quite well along on getting your new rail system up and running for harvesting plants. Enjoy stationers.